You're listening to North Central Infused, the official podcast of North Central Electric Cooperative, your source of information for your cooperative and our community. All right, North Central Infused, this is a special podcast we are doing with the release of the North Central Connect uh, preliminary service maps of the areas we will be serving. I am uh, your media specialist, Justin Jaggers. We are joined by our CEO and general manager, Kevin Doddridge. Thanks, Justin. Good to be here. And our Director of Marketing and Economic Development, Michael Bellapani. Hello. And uh, so this week on uh, September 14th, we released the first service territories that are going to be served by North Central Connect. And a lot of people were excited, some people not as much. So we are here to try and answer some of your uh, most frequently asked questions. So I will actually throw it over to Kevin. Okay, thank Who is in charge of this whole thing. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm the one they can blame. Uh, No, thank you. And and I think it's a good idea that we put this podcast on. The timing's great. Uh, We're we're doing this really in lieu of town hall type meetings, uh, which with with the virus would be really difficult to pull off. But we felt a need to respond as we revealed the service area. Did that mostly through social media. Uh, it's in the, one of the local papers, the DeSoto Times today, that came out today. And of course, when we released the phase, we got a lot of positive comments, but we got a lot of people that were concerned to where, uh, when would they be able to get um, high-speed internet service, which I'm kind of an optimist, and I see that as, as a good thing. They're, they're upset they're not getting in the first phase, but it's telling us there's still a demand for this. Uh, we've had several really prevalent questions that have come up through this process. And of course, I think the obvious one is, when am I going to get service? Uh, The simple answer to that is going to be, I'm not sure. It depends on where you live or the location of your business. Um, Our project is going to be a project that will span 1,500 miles. We'll have to install 1,500 miles of fiber optic cable. It's going to cost in excess of $125 million and hopefully serve or, or have service available to 35,000 plus homes and business. So, so you can see it's a very large project. When you get service, the, the quick answer now will be if you're in the first phase, you'll get it a lot quicker. If you're in our first phase, we really hope that we're going to have a high speed internet product available to some of our membership by late October. Uh, some of the issues that we have right now are mainly are uh, getting the make ready work done so our telecommunications pro- installers can work safely, not have to get up in the power space. Also, uh, on the heels of the, of the COVID virus, uh, manufacturing has been slowed down. So delivering the product itself isn't, it, it, it isn't extremely delayed, but at the same time, it's not as fast as we'd hope. Um, so it depends on where you live. And, and, and if you live in the first phase, you're gonna have an opportunity between October into uh, mid-spring to hopefully get that service. So the next question is going to be, how was that first phase chosen? Uh, We've got people, of course, everybody has a thought on this, and we had people that thought that maybe the service should go to the most rural area first, or take a business approach and a rate of return approach and get it in your most populated area first to get that revenue in. we kind of went down the middle a little bit on that, leaning more toward the rural area. The way the fiber will be distributed is we already have a loop through our substations. And then much like the power distribution system, we will have huts on our substation. The huts will take the fiber from that station that already exists and then distribute it out uh, to our membership. So it will originate at one of our substations. When we looked at the substation that had um, a certain amount of population around it to where we could potentially get some customers, potentially get a little revenue first, it won't maximize revenue, but I think we can all agree this, this project will fail if there's not some revenue stream coming in. But also what this uh, Bahia phase one will do, it gives us a gateway to the most rural of areas. The most rural areas of our system, going all the way down to almost the Sardis Reservoir, uh, their electricity comes from this Bahalia substation. And at some point, their high-speed internet service will as well. So we chose this area. It'll originate out of the Bahalia substation. It will go west of the substation and then due north of the substation. So when it comes west, it's going to drift into um, eastern DeSoto County, um, an unincorporated area, but an area that does have a certain population there. 
So we thought this was a great way to start. Um, then as um, the spring wore on and came into summer, and we, we continued to do our engineering, our make-ready work, we were approached by the state legislature who said they had CARES Act money that in their opinion could be allocated to telecommunications company, which we formed one, North Central Connect, to go to those companies to get high-speed internet to the most rural areas, the under and unserved areas, and the purpose of it would be to help with distance learning as so many students had to go home in the spring due to the virus. So we had discussions with the leadership. The leadership made a proposal on if we got you a certain amount of money to comply with the CARES Act, it would have to be spent by the end of the calendar year. What could you do? Um, I thought the electric co-ops made a very genuine move when we said, we'll match it. Uh, we, don't, we don't just want what you'll offer us. If you'll offer something, we, we pledge to double it. And we did just that. The legislation passed and North Central was awarded $2.8 million. Uh, the, the money went to the public utility service and the intent had to be to get into the un- and underserved areas. These areas were chosen by the public utilities group um, based on FCC maps. Now some can make an argument that the FCC maps are accurate or not accurate. They are up to date or not as up to date and I, th I think we could probably lean to the fact they could use some updating. But the fact is the public utility staff had to use that to tell us what areas we could build into. So when we inquired, we were told that the project that we had, the Bihalia area phase one, would fall into this. So once again, it made more sense to keep focusing on this Bihalia project. So as of now, we have received $2.8 million to do a build out starting in Bihalia. That project will cost us uh, in excess of seven, and then you, you net the 2.8 out. It'll be 110 miles of fiber. Um, and we're hoping that uh, hopefully by the end of the year, we can have four to 500 new customers signed up. That may be aggressive, but we're gonna have to get aggressive to do this by the end of the year. Uh, we've selected construction contractors. We got the product ordered. We're really ready to go. Uh, so for those of you that were not in the first phase, uh, continue to work. Uh, Michael's gonna tell you how you can sit there and, and show your interest to kinda give us an indication of where we need to go next. Uh, right now, though, we're going to focus on this phase one, uh, get a great high-speed internet product out there, uh, continue to look for places where potentially we could install hotspots if we need that for education purposes. And as we uh, do this build out, we're looking at the next phase. Where are we going to go next? So like I said earlier, we are going to attempt to be aggressive and build this system out within six years. A $125 million build out in six years, tough to do. Uh, North Central is valued somewhere around 180 million and it took us 70 years to build it. And even though we're not having to install all the poles we did then, we're having to change out quite a few. So uh, look at the challenge that we have. We're happy to have the challenge. We're appreciative of the grant. It, it amounts to about 2% of the total project, but every little bit helps. So be patient with us and we're gonna get aggressive on this. If you subscribe to the service, you make it uh, successful, then we're gonna go all the faster. Okay. That's right. And with that, we turn over to Michael Belafani. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, expand a little bit on those FCC maps. And, and really kind of top of mind, a topic is the census. And it's important that you get your census filled out. If you haven't done that already, please do, because it has a direct impact on so many things that uh, involve uh, uh, how, we, how we do business, how we go about life. And in this case, uh, these FCC maps were largely built, built on census blocks. And those census blocks tell you what population is where. So some people that, uh, that, that may not be in this first phase uh, might be concerned that uh, they, have, uh, they don't have service in their area. And some of these areas do have providers, uh, but a lot of that was built on dated material. So fill out your census, that's very important. Um, for those members who are interested in those uh, that would be um, interested in, in pre-registering for service, there is no obligation in doing so. We've got a website up now. It's northcentralconnect.com. If you click on the service availability link, uh, it takes you to the map of the phase one and two and phase three, which is now in engineering. You have the opportunity to put your address in there, and uh, that will tell us, uh, get in, into a, a system that we have that aggregates demand. It helps us to map this out. 
Uh, we've had a few bugs in the website. I apologize for that, but I, I, I don't know that any website launch goes smoothly. So uh, we're working through that. Especially and one that got that many hits in the first several that's hours. That's right. The yeah. traffic on that uh, on that website during the first few hours and actually the first day uh, was... We crashed three times. Yeah. yeah. It, it's wild. <laughs> so I guess from a marketing perspective, that's a good thing. But uh, yeah. But anyway... Please go on there, visit the website. You'll see our products, uh, our, our service packages, uh, some alternative offerings like battery backup, mesh extenders that we're going to offer, and phone service as well. So uh, please check that out. It's very important that you register your address because that will help guide our decisions going forward. Now, what if I don't live in the North Central Service Territory? Um, we are a member-owned cooperative, and the cooperative runs the affiliate, so we do have an obligation to our member owners. But there are going to be some areas that make sense to cross uh, to get to our members. Uh, there are some very populated areas on the uh, fringes of our service territory. So please register your address even though you're not a North Central member because that will help guide our decisions going forward. So. Um, it is possible. It is possible, yes. yes. Eventually, um, yes. Yes. And uh, I want to encourage members to check out some new tools that will be coming up on the website next week. We've uh, got a subscription to a service that will provide some good content on smart grid technology, on uh, how to cut the cord, uh, so to speak. Uh, different I things need to like look at that. that. I know we all do. <laughs> I was looking at my direct TV bill, and and I, I could probably do How this pretty easily. <laughs> just just a bit, just a bit. It hurt. <laughs> But uh, there's also going to be a tool called a digital uh, a digital streaming tool, which will allow you to go in there and uh, select the channels, the stations that you like to watch, and it will prescribe you streaming services that you can uh, take advantage of to achieve that and uh, better be able to cut the cord. And uh, I think along with that, for, through those streaming services, there's going to be some special offers. So you can take advantage of, of codes to do that and get a good deal on them. So uh, we really want to be an agent for change in that, uh, be a trusted advisor to help folks uh, be able to cut the cord and, and turn their home into a smart home, so to speak, with uh, more interconnected devices. I think the average household these days has 11 to 13 connected devices in it. So. We want to be a part of that. Amateurs. I'm sorry, I've got more. You probably have, sorry, you probably have 30 or 40. But really, in um, one room. No, I'm teasing. Uh, we have folks calling customer service, asking questions. Our, our customer service representatives are prepared to answer some of those questions. But the best way uh, for you to get more information and to let us know your interest is to go to that website at northcentralconnect.com and pre register. Okay, and before we close this out, I kind of want to drive the message home a little bit. We are working on this as safely and as quickly yes. as we can. And I know that... It's got to be done responsibly. It, it absolutely has to. And uh, we worry about your safety and our employees' safety and everything. But we are working every day to bring this out to every last member that we have in the service territory. It's just some things have come up this year in 2020 that... A lot of things have come up. And right now, our workforce is reduced because we're trying to do storm restoration work in South Louisiana and, and down in uh, rural South Alabama and in the Gulf Shores area. So once again, the, the, the electric side of North Central Electric Cooperative, that's going to be a priority and it will remain a priority. Mm -hmm. And right now, we, we've had to focus on that a little bit, but we still are, are very um, excited and optimistic on what we'll be able to do with the fiber install. Okay. Uh, so if you have any questions, that is, uh, you can email us at info at northcentralelectric.com. You can call us at 662-895-2151. We will be glad to try and answer any questions that we possibly can. It's just sometimes that we have to, we might have to give you some bad news. It's okay time. to say, I don't know yet. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. So, uh, all right. So uh, we will be uh, getting a new podcast out for October very soon and some changes to this podcast as well. So for now, we will say goodbye. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us, northcentralelectric.com, northcentralconnect.com, and uh, find us on social media. Thank you. Right. Thank you. If you have a podcast idea or want to feature your small or nonprofit business on North Central Infused, email us at podcast at northcentralelectric.com. North Central Infused is streamed on iTunes, Podbean, and Stitcher and is also available on our social media channels. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. 
Please do us a favor and subscribe to North Central Infuse. Leave a review and even share an episode with others.